I'd like to talk to you today about a pretty serious topic. You know, we have lots of different beliefs about God, but I would like to encourage you to think about just the idea, if there is no God, what are the implications? So, for example, I would say if there is no God, there's no meaning or no value or no purpose to our lives. Because there is no God who's created us who has some sort of plan to which we could like accomplish things or fail to accomplish things. So there is no purpose to what we're doing. We just are. We just exist. If there is no God, of course, there's no afterlife, no heaven above us, no hell below, a linen dream world, so to speak. If there is no God, there's only your physical body, right? There is no soul or spirit or eternity. Really, there's not even any meaningful thought because that would be something that exists beyond your physical body. Your idea of self-awareness could only mean that you're aware of your physical body because really that's all there is. If there is no God, there's no morality. When two hydrogen atoms interact with an oxygen atom, is that good? Is that bad? I think we're pretty indifferent toward that, right? It's like, well, it's neither one. It's just what happens, right? In the same way, as you think and live and interact with your environment, it's just interactions, right? There's there's nothing outside of you that's driving you, so it's, it's just the way things are. It's not that you're making choices. You might be arguing with me in your head, saying, that's not right. <laughs> but if there is no God, I think we need to put such silly notions behind us. There is no right. There is no wrong. You're not any more right than a rock is right. There are a lot of intangibles we could consider as well. You think about the idea of love, the idea that, you know, if there is no God, that, that we're this bag of biological and chemical interactions. And that somehow this bag of biological and chemical interactions has this need, this desire that's so compelling to be loved, to be accepted by some other bag of chemistry. I mean, that is really, really wild when you think about it. And so there are a lot of intangibles like that that we need to think through. Are we just a bag of chemistry or are we something more than that? And so when I look at these things, when I look at our meaning. When I, I look at the idea of a soul or spirit or us being eternal beings or there being a heaven and a hell, right and wrong, or judgment, I just feel like there are all these different things that I just, I sense inside me that these things are real. I sense who I am. I sense my value. And I'm not saying that's going to convince you that there's a God. Of course not. All I'm saying is if you're an atheist, I would encourage you to think through these things and just to be consistent in these beliefs. So we have to say, okay, well, all these things that I sense within myself are there because God has put them there. He created me as an eternal being, as one who needs to be loved, needs to express love, who has a sense of right and wrong. Or it could just be that... Well, these things are all just products of natural selection, right? Evolution is tricking me into thinking all these things are real so that, so that what? So that I'll live, I'll live long enough to reproduce, I guess. That seems to be the big goal. So I don't expect this to convince you. I just want to challenge you. Consider these things, these things that are within you. I think you should be your own toughest opponent. Because there are things in you that you know about yourself, that you believe about yourself, and you just have to decide, did these things come from God or did they just come from nature? Let me know your thoughts.